Hi everyone, meteorologist Brian Bennett. Here's your Florida red tide update for October 20th. And the goal of this video is to show you what red tide is like in an area of Florida that you're interested in on the west coast or the east coast, and also give you an idea of what you can expect over the next seven days. Here's a look at the latest water samples, and you can see that we're seeing lots of red dots and orange dots in Pinellas County and even down through parts of Manatee County indicating medium to high concentrations of crinia brevis. Conditions have improved a little bit for parts of southern Sarasota, Charlotte, Lee, and Collier counties. And red tide is really spreading and taking up a lot of coastline, basically from Brevard County all the way down to Broward, with the worst concentration right now around Brevard County. In fact, take a look at this picture taken yesterday in Cocoa Beach. Fish littering the shoreline a sad picture that we seem to be seeing over and over again southwest florida has actually been dealing with red tide for a year now around the sanibel island and fort myers area a whole year that we've been dealing with this fortunately though that area is getting a little bit of a reprieve but red tide does continue as you saw on the west coast of florida and it's getting worse on the east coast of florida here's a look at chlorophyll from a satellite image and chlorophyll is a good starting point to determine where red tide might be located but just know that chlorophyll images like this do not differentiate between harmful algae blooms or just regular old algae that does not release toxins nonetheless you can see a wide area of algae growth off the southwest coast of florida and off the east coast of florida it's much more narrow so it's going to be easier to get rid of red tide that's occurring on the east coast of florida and really all that area needs is a either a drop in gulf or excuse me atlantic temperatures or a major change in wind direction one of the reasons we're seeing carinia brevis concentration so high on the east coast of florida is due to the gulf stream it's a naturally occurring gulf current that comes up between cuba and yucatan peninsula comes into the gulf of mexico possibly picks up some nutrients and crinia brevis from the impacted area here off the west coast of florida comes around the florida keys and then possibly deposits some of those nutrients and the crinia brevis along the east coast of florida you complicate that with a easterly wind a surface wind that'll blow some of the some of the surface nutrients and crinia brevis toward the east coast of florida and that prolonged period of easterly winds is why we're seeing the higher concentrations along the east coast of florida all right let's take a closer look at the southwest coast of florida right now and on this satellite image here you can actually make out the kind of brown murky color of red tide which i've been showing you now for several months and you can see especially off of pinellas county we're looking at a 13 mile wide area of red tide which is especially dense especially offshore in this area right here that i've highlighted in red other areas indicating possibly not as high of concentrated area of red tide but nonetheless we are seeing the crania brevis in uh, some decent concentrations anywhere in this area highlighted in the orange color a bit of an improvement recently over the venice and southern sarasota area with only very sporadic red tide so some great news in this area and let's hope that that good area will actually start to spread a little bit to the north and the south and also that it will continue to look good in this area and if you get down towards the Boca Grande area, we do have one or two reports of some medium concentrated crania brevis water along the immediate shoreline. Otherwise, the densest area of red tide is just offshore of the Boca Grande area in this area, area of highlighted in the red here. And the overall bloom offshore Fort Myers Beach has shrunk in width some. It was 50 miles wide before Hurricane Michael, and it has shrunk to about 25 miles wide right now of an area that has anywhere from background to maybe a medium concentration throughout much of this bloom here. Again, the densest part, possibly highly concentrated, is offshore of the Boca Grande and Captiva area all right so that's kind of what's happening right now let's take a look at the forecast and the first thing i want to do is look at the gulf and atlantic ocean currents because those are a large factor in controlling where the red tide drifts are going to go so 
Today, Saturday, when I'm making this video, we're looking at onshore currents on the west side and the east side of Florida. So that's not great news. It's dragging some of the Carinia brevis and the nutrients toward the immediate coastlines. Now, one day of this isn't going to be hugely harmful, but if we were to have onshore winds for several days or a week or more, then that's when we would really start to see conditions deteriorate in your area. Fortunately, moving into tomorrow, Sunday, Gulf currents and Atlantic currents will be switching to the north. So good news for the Gulf and the Atlantic that we won't have those onshore currents bringing the Crania Brevis ashore. Now on Monday, however, for the southwest coast of Florida, we're looking at currents going offshore. Around the West Palm area, we're looking at the currents moving onshore. So sometimes what's good for the Gulf Coast is not good for the Atlantic coast. So good for the southwest on Monday, bad for the Atlantic coast. And then similar thing goes on Tuesday when we have that east to west flow continuing. So good news for the Gulf Coast, helping to drag the Crania Brevis out into the Gulf of Mexico. Same thing goes on Wednesday. And on Thursday, looking okay for the Gulf Coast. The Atlantic coast, again, having that onshore flow, not great news. That's going to keep Crania Brevis impacting a lot of the beaches along the east coast of Florida. And then on Friday, the winds and the currents shift a little bit. So that's not great news for the Gulf County beaches. And it's actually a little bit better for the Atlantic beaches. It's kind of a moderate onshore flow for the Atlantic beaches on Friday. And then on Saturday, okay for the Gulf beaches and pretty good for the Atlantic beaches. All right, so what about wind direction? That's another important thing to look at because as you know, the uh, the crania brevis can release toxins, which are called brevitoxins, and those airborne brevitoxins can irritate your throat and cause coughing or really major irritation, especially with people with emphysema, COPD, or asthma. So wind direction is very important and not, not always a one-to-one -one issue with the Gulf current. So let, let's take a look at that real quick. So on Saturday, which again is today when I'm making this video, we are looking at some onshore winds. So you might be noticing a little bit of uh, throat irritation, especially if you're at the immediate coastline. Though keeping in mind that Brevitoxins can actually drift inland about one mile or so, so you don't have to be right along the immediate coastline to be feeling some of the effects of red tide. All right, so Sunday, looking good for the Gulf Coast. And again, you can look over here at the Atlantic Coast and see that we're looking at an onshore wind, which is not great news, but good news on Sunday for the Gulf Coast with the offshore winds. For the Gulf Coast on Monday, good news, we're looking at offshore winds, so brevitoxins shouldn't be a major issue. Tuesday, we're looking at winds blowing, for the most part, offshore, but we could have a brief period of a Gulf sea breeze on Tuesday, so kind of okay conditions on your Tuesday for the Gulf Coast. Then on Wednesday, we're looking pretty good, keeping those brevitoxins offshore. Thursday, eh, not the greatest. We're starting to see the winds turn onshore a little bit, so you if you're near beach areas on Thursday, you might start to notice a little bit of coughing or sneezing. On Friday, we're looking at a pretty good onshore wind, especially in areas that are highly impacted by red tide. So bad air quality on Friday uh, for much of the Gulf Coast due to a low pressure system setting offshore and giving us a counterclockwise circulation. And then on Saturday, not really the greatest either with a bit of an onshore component as well. So the bottom line here for Southwest Florida, over the next seven days, no major migration of surface red tide blooms. So not expecting the bloom to make a major shift over the next seven days. The airborne brevitoxins on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are going to be pretty high in areas where we have high concentrations of Crinia brevis, especially southern Pinellas County, possibly even parts of the Boca Grande area where those onshore winds that could make breathing a little difficult again on Thursday Friday and Saturday of this coming week. How about Southeast Florida? Well, red tide is not going to go anywhere, unfortunately, because for the most part, we're going to continue to see that predominant onshore wind and those onshore currents as well. So conditions probably won't change too much over the next seven days in Southeast Florida. All right, that's a quick look at the red tide and the current status and what we expect over the next seven days. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. As always, I always appreciate clicking that like button or subscribe or sharing. And uh, that's it for now. All right, thank you guys for watching.